Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We're switching lanes now to track and field. Day two of World Athletics Under-20 Championship is on in earnest with some of the region's best young talents on display. U.S. Virgin Islander Michelle Smith is one of two Caribbean athletes making progress to the women's 400-meter hurdles semifinals. Smith won heat two in 57.87 seconds to lead all qualifiers. She was joined by Jamaica's Kellyanne Carr, who finished second in heat four, clocking one minute 00.61 seconds. On the men's side, Jamaica's Daniel Wright and Travoy Smith, along with Trinidad and Tobago's Shane West, advanced to the semifinals. Wright won Heat 2 in 51.42 seconds. Travoy Smith was fourth in Heat 6 in 52.15 seconds to advance as one of the fastest losers. Trinidad and Tobago's Shane West also advanced as a fastest loser running a personal best of 52.18 seconds for fourth in Heat 5. Well, Jamaica's Shan Q. Williams will be the only Caribbean representative in the women's 400-meter semifinals, set to go off in a few minutes. Guyana's Tiana Springer surprisingly did not advance after finishing fourth in Heat 5. Well, on the men's side, Guyana's Malachi Austin, Jamaica's Kimario Bygrave and Trinidad and Tobago's Jaden Clement will all contest this evening's semifinals. Well, the Caribbean could earn its first medal of the championship with the women's and men's 100-meter finals set to take place later today. Let's look at the lane assignments, starting with the ladies. So in lane two from Australia, Alexandra Stolova. Then in lane three, Nigeria, Justina Iakpobian. Then in lane four, Barbados, Kishana Niles. In lane five, Gibraltar. Great uh, Britain. Great Britain, Nia Wedderburn Goodison. Then in lane six, Jamaica, Alana Reed. Lane seven, Germany, Chelsea Kadiri. In lane eight, we have the BVI, Adeja Hodge and the lane nine RSA, which is South Africa, Vivwe Jinji. All right, let's see the men's now. So in lane two, China, Jin Kwan He. In lane three, Japan, Naoki Nishioka. Then again, South Africa in lane four here, Bayanda Walaza. Jamaica in lane five, DeAndre Daly. Then we have, uh, Thailand in lane six, Kuripul Boonson, then South Africa in lane seven, Bradley Koana, then Great Britain, Teddy Wilson in lane eight, and Jamaica in lane nine, Gary Carr. Well, our in-house track and field analyst, we had to send for him, Leighton Levy. He joins us for this discussion. Good afternoon, Leighton. How are you doing? Hi, Maria. I am good. Uh, you know. Just oh. winding down from the website from morning, but I'm here. I'm good. Well, so happy to have you on. You know, once we have track and field, we have to invite you. And um, we're getting ready for a lot of exciting events this afternoon. Which one are you looking forward to most? Let's start there. I think both 100 meter finals are going to be quite interesting. I think there's a possibility that the Caribbean could have two people on the podium in each of those races, but it's going to take perhaps season best performances from all of them to get there because the fields are relatively open, in, in, you know, especially among the guys. I mean, Gary Card looks good. I think DeAndre Daly looks, this is the best I've seen him since early this season when he was injured. He looks like he's rolling into the form that saw him run 10 0 last season. And I think if he gets close to that time, he could very well win. But it comes on to who's going to execute best in the final. Gary Card has been looking good for the past couple of seasons. But I think Daly, of the, of the Jamaicans in the final, I think Daly perhaps looks the better of the two. But I think it's going to be a, a very keenly contested final. And I think both of them, if they get to the podium, they're going to have to be at their best. Uh, when you look at, for example, Bonsoon, who you mentioned earlier, and he, both of them are both, both of these um, athletes look really solid and look 
that if they're, if they're come to the party, they'll be on the podium as well. So it's, got, it's not a cakewalk and it's not going to be easy. I think for the women, Alana Reed and Adesha Hodge, and of course, Kishana Niles, I think both, all three of those athletes look really good. I think uh, Alana Reed looks pretty solid as well. But Adesha Hodge has shown she has class, and I think she, if she brings that class to the final, she could very well end up winning it all. So it's, it's going to be an exciting two races. I'm looking forward to see how they play out because what we've learned so far this year, especially coming up to the Olympic Games, is that nothing is certain and nothing is, is to, should be taken for granted because you have to run the races. And unless these athletes are prepared to compete at their best when it matters most, they could find themselves on the outside looking, looking in. And... Um, yeah, and how good has Kishona Niles looked from Barbados with a time of 11.39 seconds? Uh, you're talking about Kishona Niles? Yeah. Um, Niles, I think she, she, she's been looking pretty solid. I mean, we saw her here at the character at the trials in Jamaica, and she looked pretty good. And I think she's continued to be consistent throughout the rounds. And I think, um, who knows, she could pull off something spectacular in the final because... Her consistency suggests that she could drop a solid time here, which could get her on the podium. Because whatever happened prior to prior to now doesn't matter. Is what happens in the final in, in, later on this evening. And I think if she can put a solid bit together, there's no reason why she can't be on the podium. Yeah, Layton, are we seeing a difference in your estimation um, between the athletes who? let me say, prioritized the World Under-20 Championships as opposed to those who probably um, were looking at doing well, very well at pretty much everything that they contested this year. And I, I say that against the background of looking at especially a number of the Jamaican athletes who have not been at their best so far. Of course, we know it's a long season. It's the back end mm -hmm. of that season. It's outside of the regular period that they would usually compete. Of course, most times the World on the 20s will be held sometime in, in July. We are over mm -hmm. a month out from that. But when you look at someone like a DeAndre Daly, who said from very early in the season, my priority is the World on the 20 championships. And, and you're seeing what he's able to produce in comparison to some of the other Jamaican athletes. Yeah, I agree with you, Ricardo. And, and I think the, the, the early setback I think he had this season, I think may have helped him as well. Mm. Because then, you know, his cycling would have been completely designed, coming off of that situation where he was struggling early in the season, it would actually have him literally relatively fresh for this top half of the season, as opposed to others who would have, I mean, Gary Card, we saw him at Carifta, you know, um, you know that, that what character was what? Six months ago, I mean, four months ago almost. So I think, as you might rightly say, the, the long season has had an impact on some of these athletes. But for others like DeAndre Daly, I think it would have been a benefit given that he had early season struggles and would have had enough time to get back into the shape that we've seen him now. Yeah, very much the case. Even look at someone like Adeja Hodge, and we haven't had the women's 100 final yet, but even just looking at her through the round, she hasn't been um, superb. She, she hasn't looked at her very best. 11.59, second in her semifinal to get through mm -hmm. to the final. But if you were to judge just based off what happened in qualifying, it might be a slight surprise if she came away with a medal in the 100. And of course, she's coming off the Olympic Games and so on. Um, but another one for you, Leighton, because, you know, following the Olympic Games, Julian Alfred gave an interview where she spoke of how difficult it was to do the double, especially because the 200-meter heats came the morning after the 100-meter final in Paris 2024. And I'm looking at this World Athletics um, on the 20 schedule, and I see two rounds, two rounds, Leighton, of 400 meters on the same day. You run qualifying in the morning, and you are back, what, four hours later to run the semifinals. Your thoughts on that scheduling? I think it's crazy. And I think you, we've seen it in, in just the Olympics as well, where the, the women in the 200 didn't even get an extra day to rest and recover. Um, well, I don't know who is doing these schedules, but I think they probably start to think that the athletes are machines. At the senior level, the athletes get an extra day. And they, they get to run the heat and the, 
the next round the following day and then the final the following day. Why would you then give these juniors who are still developing, who are not as strong as they will eventually be, to have two rounds of the 400 meters, one of the toughest events in track and field, on the same day? It doesn't make sense to me at all because the reality is that these kids are still developing their strength levels, they're still developing their endurance levels, they're still developing, period. So why would you have two rounds of one of the toughest events on the same day? I find it, I find it a little bit unsettling, and I think I don't know what it is that why whoever is writing the, creating these schedules are not taking into consideration the recovery process that these athletes have to go through. Because it's just like, I mean, someone asked me that this morning, actually, about why is it that athletes are running two rounds on one day and the finals on the next day. For the 100 and the 200, perhaps it's a little bit less um, draining, but for the 400, it's physically demanding. You, don't, you can't recover sufficiently enough you will not get the best performance of these athletes when you have two rounds of such an event on the same day. It makes no sense to me. And it's rather concerning. And interestingly, the 400 hurdles, the qualifying races um, today and the semifinals are not until Friday. So they get an entire day's break between the first round and the semis. Yeah, and that's exactly the point. So you're seeing this inconsistency in how the schedule is set up. I'm not quite sure who is doing this, but I... I I would even have a guess, Ricardo, to be honest with you, because I find a lot of it just doesn't make sense in how things are being set up for these athletes. And it puts them under undue pressure, especially, well, look, as you mentioned, the 400 meter hurdles, they hurdles get a day off to rest and recover. Why wouldn't you do the same for the 400 meter athletes? Because they also go through, it, the 400 meters is a grind. It's a tough race. It's not because you're not um, clearing 10 obstacles doesn't mean that it's less different, more difficult than the, the 400 meter hurdles. So they should get a similar amount of time to rest and recover because again, they're still developing. Yeah. Or at least three rounds over three days for both the 400 and the 400 hurdlers, I think. I've, I've seen some ridiculous schedules at the world on the 18s and the world on the 20s in the past. It's not the first time I remember when I went to Cali, Colombia in 2015 for the um, U18 championship that they had all three rounds of the 100 meters on the same day. On the um, same day. Which, which I found to be crazy at the time. Um, but Leighton, so often we speak about the issue of mental readiness um, to compete on the global stage in big championship. Um, We've probably already seen one example at these World Under-20 Championships, Tiana Lee Terrellong, the young Jamaican, an 11-1-3 performer at her best, 12.03 seconds in her qualifying race yesterday, unable to make it beyond round one of the competition. And she had no words, literally no words, in her post-race interview where when she was asked what was going on, she was just giving... Just head nods and, and, and shaking her head. Just head nods. And uh, your thoughts on the situation? Ricardo, we've spoken about this before when it comes to other athletes. And I've said that the importance of, of how, how important it is to have a sports psychologist pass on your teams. And people have taken me on about it, especially in the last, after we did the last interview about Oblique Seville. And somebody mm -hmm. asked whether or not, what are my credentials to be asking these questions? My credentials are that I've spoken to a number of athletes over the past 20 years after circumstances like this. And what they have told me have informed me enough to suggest that they do need help, especially when it comes to high pressure situations like global championships. And what we're seeing with Tiana Terrellong is not the first time we're seeing things like this, Ricardo. We've okay. seen it at character with her recently at Chancellor, where she broods, she broods over circumstances that impair her ability to perform at her best levels. And one of the things that people seem to lack, um, lack the understanding is that when you come to the reality that the physical is only a part of how you, what allows you to perform at your best, the mental part of things also is a significant part of why, of why athletes succeed at this level and why others fail. Because if you're not prepared mentally to handle the pressures of expectations, either from yourself or from the public at large or for your coaches. When you go into these competitions, you're going to struggle. And we're seeing a situation where we don't know exactly what the circumstances are with Tiana Terrellon. But from what we can tell from her history of performances, 
is that perhaps there needs to be an intervention on her part to prepare her for these competitions or prepare her to perform at her best when it matters most. Because clearly what is going on, something is wrong that prevents her from being at her best in these circumstances. Whether or not she's a sports psychologist that needs to go deeper than that, it's, it's up to an expert to determine. But what we are seeing on the surface of it is that she's clearly not prepared mentally to handle the pressures of these expectations. Again, either from herself, because it seems as you see, she internalizes a lot of her performances and then beats herself up. I'm not an expert. I'm just saying that's just what it seems like. And clearly, there is something that needs to be done to help her because she clearly needs the support and she clearly needs the help. Because what we saw from her in that interview that has now gone viral is someone who doesn't have a clue as to what is happening, why she underperforms when she's expected to perform at her best and she's not able to. So clearly, it's not a physical thing, but clearly, it's, a, it's something else that, is, that prevents her from putting her best, fall, best, best foot forward when she needs to. Yeah, and not to take anything away from the sports psychologists, but a term I am hearing more and more now, and not just in track and field, but across many different sports, is performance coach. And that oh, is what a lot of the athletes are utilizing, um, Leighton. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I need people to be, on, to be clear on is that when we say employ the services of a sports psychologist, we're not saying that something is wrong with the athlete mentally. We're saying that the athlete might need help to get into that mental space to allow them to perform better than they are, are as well as they expect to perform. We're not saying that they're deficient mentally or there something is wrong with them in the sense that they might need to, you know, therapy or, or medication or whatever it is that people think when they think about sports psychology. It's about putting your mind in a space where you're able to execute at your best because your focus is on what needs to be focused on and not any distractions. We just heard Stephen Francis talk about the, the, the potential impact of social media. All these things are taken into consideration when we're talking about um, getting the kind of support that you have, that they need mentally to be able to perform at their best. And clearly, what we're seeing from young Ter Ter um, Terry Long is that she clearly needs help. Not to say that she's insane or she's crazy, but that she needs help to be able to get to that level where she's able to then hone in on what she needs to do to perform at their best when she needs to perform at her best. So that when these things happen, she's not speechless. She's not clueless as to why she's unable to pull, pull the trigger on these occasions when she needs to be at her best. So it's, it's a situation where what we've seen from her repeatedly, I mean, we saw it at Champs, we've seen it at Carousel, where she runs fast, fantastic times in, the, in, the, in early preliminary rounds and then able, not able to pull the trigger in the finals. And this occasion, she's not able to pull the trigger even in the preliminary round, which suggests that there is something that needs to be addressed. And it's not that we're saying that, you know, you know we are making the situation worse than it actually is. Is the fact is that this young lady clearly has the potential and she's not being able to deliver because of circumstances that probably need to be explored and need to be addressed. Yeah, very much the case. Thank you very much, Leighton D.V. I know I was watching um, the Netflix series Breakpoint and Arena Sabalenka when she won her first Grand Slam. A theme of that episode on Breakpoint was the interactions between herself and her performance coach. Not her tennis mm -hmm. coach now, the one who is guiding her on technical things, but the performance coach in trying to get over the hurdle of becoming a Grand Slam champion for the first time. I leave that at that. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You know, so this young lady clearly is physically capable, yeah. but there's something that's preventing her from getting it. We're out of time, Dayton. Take care. Take it easy. We'll take a break on the Sports Bank Zone. Tomorrow, we'll be discussing what happens at the World Under 20 Championships with the 100 finals set for this evening. We still have Just the Facts and Interactive to come on today's show, plus the second zone update with Ms. Ramarack.